Hey, so today we're having a look at a keyboard that is currently in a group by phase and that is the CU65 from Caps Unlocked. One of the most unique features with this keyboard is its PCB that supports multiple layouts including ISO and NC while still being hot swap. It starts at 120 pounds or approximately 165 USD, so let's see what this keyboard is all about. So Caps Unlock did send this keyboard to me and they included a few accessories that you will also be able to add on top. So they also sent me some Duroc L7 linear switches with 62 gram springs and Duroc V2 stabilizers. Some pretty good stuff in here. Also, candies. All right. You also get an aluminum bar to have the keyboard at an angle and then the case itself with the PCB. If you order the same kit from Caps Unlocked with switches and stabilizers, it would be a little over 185 pounds. So I started the build by lubing the stabilizers. I only did the wires, but you would get better results by lubing the housings as well. I installed them on the PCB and added screws at the back to lock them in place. And then finally added switches in to see if they sounded all right. I proceeded to install the PCB in the case now that the stabs are in. This one is screwed in the plate and the plate is part of the top assembly. So this keyboard is a top mount design. I then assemble the bar under the bottom plate of the case. It locks in with three screws that won't show once the build is complete. I added the foam behind the PCB and the bottom plate assembly, which I could secure with a bunch of screws. Before flipping the board over, I added the rubber strips at the bottom. With the kickstand, you're only supposed to add one rubber strips at the front of the keyboard, but I didn't want risking to scratch anything given that the stand is aluminum, so I added one there too. Before adding the switches in, I decided to lube them with carbon GS2 grease from Kinetic Labs. So I undid all switches, bag lubed the springs with the same lube, and then lubed all of them individually from the rails on the bottom section to all four sides and legs on the stems. These switches were factory lubed, but I just went over with my own lube and it did result in a nice and smooth feel. I added all switches in. Here, this PCB supports multiple layouts. So generally, switch sockets are south facing, but in certain cases, they are north facing or even east or west. Just something to remember when picking keycaps to prevent interference. Also, it doesn't have LEDs, so the switch orientation doesn't matter much. I finally installed a Polycaps 9009 keycap set that I had from Kinetic Labs. I have to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this theme, but the quality is pretty nice for the price if you do like it. I ended up replacing it with another PBT set that I've had laying around for a while that you'll see later on in this video. So looking a little closer at this keyboard, the quality is pretty good. It is all aluminum in this black anodized color and the finish seems resistant. Also, I have not noticed any machining marks anywhere on the outside of the case. It's also relatively light for a full aluminum board at around 830 grams. The case is quite thick too, even at the front. It is higher than a tofu, so you might benefit from a wrist rest with this one, unless you already type with your wrists hovering on your desk. The design is clean and simple. It looks like your typical 65% aluminum board, minus the leg part that is probably the most unique part of how this keyboard looks. Given that the PCB is screwed in the top plate from the bottom, and same thing with the bottom part of the case, there are no visible screws from the top. The bottom plate also has the model and brand engraved, and the tolerances with the top part of the case are pretty good. It's also interesting that a sheet of foam was included with this keyboard, however, it feels like an afterthought. It does look and feel like craft foam, and it's also worth noting that this keyboard has been designed like around two years ago, when adding foam wasn't as common as today. I did replace it with some denser neoprene foam that I had, which made a little difference, but given that there's no foam between the plate and PCB, the sound isn't that much dampened. So now to the layout, this is probably the best feature of this keyboard. Usually hot swap PCBs only allow for a single layout. That's because hot swap sockets are bulky and you cannot have many of them too close to each other compared to simple soldering holes. However, with this one, you can use the same PCB for multiple layouts, including standard ANSI and ISO, and they achieve that by placing the hot swap sockets in various orientations to accommodate for spots where two layouts have switches that are slightly off. And not only does it support NC and ISO, but also other variations of the two, like a 7U spacebar and different size bottom row modifiers. 
That's something that very few keyboards support. Even just HISO support on a hot swap board is pretty rare, so that's quite impressive. The main downside is that you might have switches in different orientations, which I didn't feel made any difference, but some of them won't be locked into the plate, like the enter key on NC, so it definitely affects how each key sounds more than a plate and PCB that are for a single layout. Apart from this multi-layout feature, the keyboard has a blocker to split arrow keys and mods, which I personally prefer over the fully filled 65% layout we see on some other keyboards, such as the NK65. Although not necessarily related to this keyboard, the Duroc V2 stabs and L7 switches have been awesome. The stabs feel and sound great with little rattle, even if I barely tune them, and the switches are super smooth. I might end up filming them as the housings weren't super tight, but they already feel great and with 62 gram springs, I feel like they're just perfect for me. Now I'll leave you to a sound test. I feel like this case would sound a lot better with a denser sheet of foam at the bottom and plate foam. The switches and stabs sound pretty good, but again, these stabs could be tuned a bit more for a perfect rattle-free sound. Given that the plate is built into the top part of the case and the whole assembly is screwed together at multiple points, it results in a very stiff typing experience and, like I mentioned earlier, the fact that the plate accounts for multiple layouts results in some switches not really being seated on the plate, so switches have a different pitch depending on their location. Final features, or lack thereof to note, there are no LEDs on this keyboard, no wireless connectivity options, and key remapping is possible but only through QMK with no mentions of VIA support eventually. So while it is possible to remap this keyboard to pretty much what you want, you are limited to using QMK which isn't as user friendly, especially if you're starting out. So in conclusion, I would say this is an interesting board. I would get it especially for its build quality and the multiple layout hot swap support. Even if you don't plan on switching from NC to ISO, it would allow for smaller layout changes such as a 7U spacebar. I think it's a better option than the drop alt high profile as it's pretty much better or equal on all aspects, minus RGB. Compared against the NK65 aluminum, it supports screw and stabilizers and the multi-layout feature while still having a similar top mount system. I think the most similar board out there to this one was the EQ68 Aurora that also had the multi-layout feature, plus a more modern acoustic solution if you're okay to switch to a plastic case. But again, this keyboard is part of a group buy that ended, so yeah. A unique keyboard that will definitely please ISO layout users and maybe others. For me, I just think it looks great with great craftsmanship and I will definitely keep it as part of my collection. So that wraps it up for today. Hope you liked this video. Make sure you hit that like button if you did. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.